Risk factors for preventable chronic diseases are tobacco use, lack of physical activity, and excessive alcohol use. The risk factors have caused unpreventable and preventable diseases like disability and death. To reduce these risk factors, prevent diseases or injury before it ever occurs, reduce the impact of a disease or injury that has already occurred, soften the impact of an ongoing illness or injury that has lasting effects. We all need to invest our time and money in improving healthy lifestyle behavior by increasing physical activity and improving our diet. By doing this, almost 35% of early deaths will be avoided. Our integrative nutrition health specialist, Betty Olayinka Folari Akinlo Sotu, aka BOFA, advocates for this every Sunday on Health Corner and Nutrition Segments, showing on Healthy Living with BOFA Channel, where she also features professionals on interview with expert segments. Join us every Sunday. 2 p.m. U.S. time, 7 p.m. U.K. and Nigerian time, 8 p.m. South African time. See you there. Welcome back to Healthy Living with Bufa Heads and Nutrition Talk Show viewers. My name is Steve May Betsy Olayinka Falani Akelo. So to your host, an integrative nutrition specialist. Thank you so much for joining us today, the first Sunday in August. Oh, my goodness. December is fast approaching again. What can we do? We just have to thank God and bless him and be prayerful and be positive that we are all going to cross over to 2023. As usual, I'm positive. So you to be positive. Yes. All you need to do for you to cross over to 2023 is this. You need to make sure that you eat healthy. You exercise regularly. Treat your body well. Stay away from stress. Check your body with your doctor to see what's actually going on with that beautiful body of yours. The rest, leave it to God to take care of. Yes. I'm, pro I'm promising you if you can do all this, you will definitely make it. You'll be in good health. Your optimum health is sure and guaranteed. Try it. Yes, so, okay. Our last discussion on the health and nutrition segment focused on the skincare routine. And we educated ourselves on how we can hygienically take care of our skin. And the focus was on the face. Yes, we talk about how to take care of our face hygienically. We also advise on the supplements and diet for the skin. Yes, we discussed it about it. I want to tell you today that I am convinced within me because the feedback we received from this particular topic brings tons of questions, which I will be talking about. I'll be answering that question right after today's main discussion. I promise that. But if I cannot get to your question today, be rest assured that next show on health and nutrition segment I will be answering the rest of the question. So don't think that if I don't talk about your question or if I don't answer your question, I don't know the answer or I ignore you. No, I'm not going to ignore anybody because this is the reason why this show is alive. We want to prevent all this problem before happening. So that is what we want to talk about. So preventative care is what we stand for. Now, one of the questions received last week will permit me to walk you through a topic I titled blood type diet. Yeah, blood, blood type diet. I want to talk about this issue because we've been receiving questions and I realized that people have been deceived and advised wrongly. And I want you to know the truth to behind blood type diet. But before we get started, let's take a break. There is this saying that you are what you eat. This is absolutely correct. You see, eating right is when we get all the essential nutrients our body needs from the food we eat daily. 
and these are minerals, vitamins, fats, healthy carbs, proteins and fiber. The question we should be asking ourselves is, have I been feeding my body with essential food nutrients? Many people have been advised to stay away from certain food because they are very high in carbohydrates. But studies show your body system needs carbohydrates which we call energy food. What is important is to go for healthy carbohydrates. Gary Didon is a super cereal that can supply your body system with all these nutrients. Developed by Ajogwe Foods and made from Gary, cassava, turmeric, coconut and lemongrass extracts. The nutrients you get from Gary Didon include healthy carbs, minerals, vitamins, fats, proteins and fiber. So, whether you are super healthy or have some health conditions such as diabetes or high blood pressure, the expert's nutrition advice is to go for Gary Didu. You can eat directly as snack or soak in water. You will love Gary Didu. Are you hosting or attending an event and wondering over a budget of an air that will delight your guests and associates? Whether it's your party or you are supporting someone special with gifts and souvenirs, we would like to work with you. At Ajogbe Foods, our focus is on healthy living through the provision of safe, hygienically packaged and nutritionally rich foods. We can customize and package our products. Ajogbe Tumeri Gari Didu, Ajogbe White Gari, Ajogbe Rice, Ajogbe Beans and Ajogbe Honey. Inside and prices you can afford are souvenirs and gifts that everyone loves. For your special orders, purchase and resale inquiries, contact us today through the following 292 Murtala Mohammed Way, Yaba, Lagos. You can telephone us or send WhatsApp to plus 234-705-534-2424 and plus 234-705-656-5655. Nine. For US order, contact Berg and BWM Services at plus one three four seven six one three five four eight five. Bringing you Gary Didu. Today we are discussing about blood type diet, and don't forget that I promised to answer some of the questions received from the last show on the skincare. I'll take care of that after today's discussion. Don't worry about that. I promise. Okay, let's talk about blood type diet. You see, when it comes to diet, I mean the food you eat or drink. Of course, we all know that there are some food that comes in form of liquid. Yes. Whichever one you consume. It's been described how people could be healthier, live longer, and achieve their ideal weight by eating according to their blood type. It is made to believe that one's choice of condiment, spices, and even exercise should depend on one's blood type. And if you can remember, there is one word I always mention every time on this show, and that is about individuality. Yes, diet is based on individual's health status, environment, immune system, but definitely not only based on blood type. No, there is a fact I want you to understand today based on this blood type diet. For instance, if I live in the U.S. or I'm, I'm in U.S. right now, I eat rice with everything that makes the food healthier than other food. And you live in Africa, Nigeria precisely, and you also experiment on the same dish, same day, probably different time. I want to confidently tell you today that even though we had the same healthy meal on the same day, that doesn't stop me from developing health concern about the food, which you think is healthier. You know why? Because we carry different blood types. Our immune is different. The weather is different. And there are more to be considered for the reason why I develop health problem caused by the food we both eat. This is an example of bio-individuality. Does that mean that the food is not healthy enough to fight the radicals? No. I've just told you what could have caused the problem. 
It could mean that my immune system has been compromised, which, are, which can cause a barrier for my immune system to fight the bacteria. That is just it. So if certain things work good for me and it doesn't for you or others, there must be a reason for that. Definitely not necessarily because of your blood type. Yes. All you need to do is to pay attention to the response you get from what you eat, drink, what you apply on your body, and what you do with your body. It is very important to pay attention to our body when we eat things, when we do certain things, when we apply anything on our skin. Please pay attention to any reaction, any response you get. That is it. This is the only medication you need in life to live well. There is no right or wrong in this. Likewise, no magic in it. You either believe what I tell you today to pay attention to, or you don't you or you ignore and face the consequence. And what is the consequence? Illness, of course. Health problem, of course. Lot of things go on in on your body. So these are the consequences. First thing I want you to put at the front of your mind so that you see it every day, not at the back of your mind. I don't like saying that, put it at the back of your mind. No, you won't see it, you won't remember. You only see what is in your front. So I'm going to say that whatever I'm going to tell you today, just put it, stick it to your brain. Put it in front of your mind so that you see it every day. And that is when it comes to healthy lifestyle, there is no one size fits all approach to healthy lifestyle. No size fits all style or method to a healthy lifestyle. If anyone tells you there is, the person is a typical liar. The person has no idea what health, wellness, and nutrition are. Because successful eating plans need to be individualized and take the whole person into consideration. Like I said, individuality. About individuality. One man's food is another person's poison. That is just it. He has to be individualized. A whole body must be put into consideration. That is what lifestyle is all about healthy lifestyle that is what it's all about and anyone that wants to start a new diet plan must first of all consult with a healthcare provider or a registered dietitian nutritionist especially if you have an underlying health condition now what is the blood type diet the blood type diet is based on the theory that your blood oh my goodness, is based on the theory that your blood type determines the food you should consume and the exercise you should do to achieve optimal health. And this theory, I mean, this diet plan was originally developed by a naturopathic physician he was the first person that discovered this theory that developed it now let me tell you about the idea behind this blood type diet the idea is that eating food with lectin is a type of protein incompatible with a person's blood type can cause blood cell clumping called agglutination and results in health problems such as heart or kidney disease or cancer. This is just the reason why physicians say that your blood type determines the food you should consume and the exercise 
you should do to achieve optimum health your body deserves. I've received many videos, write-ups, you know, things, flyers stating your blood type is related to whatever you eat. And when I took my time to research on this, it was totally different from what I'm hearing from people. The confusion people have planted in their memory is just unbearable for me. So now, hear what the expert says. And I quote, Basing a diet, I want you to listen to this very well. And this will definitely tell you, will make you to think deeply if your food is based on your blood. You know that. And when I say experts say something, I mean people that are rooted in this profession, period. Now, this is what they say. They said, basing a diet on your blood type is not evidence-based and restricts many healthy foods. Nutrition experts, those that know more than I do, those that trained me, those that educated me, those that taught me, do not support or recommend this diet for achieving nutrition or health goals. And somebody, a physician, is going to come out and tell me that it's based on your blood. You know why? Because it's a physician. And those physicians, some of them don't want you to eat food. They don't want you to eat this, eat that, that can give you optimum health. You know why? Because they want you to come back to them and get treated. So that is why they try to mix things up. They try to confuse people from eating the food that will work for them so that they can come back to them. Listen to what you and I should not eat. I mean, if you are type O blood, the natural party physicians said that those with type O blood should choose high protein food and eat lots of meat, vegetables, fish, and fruit. But listen, limit grains, beans, and legumes. And if you now want to lose weight, they advise you to eat seafood, red meat, uh, broccoli, spinach, uh, and olive oil. But you must avoid wheat and corn. This is where I'm going. And I need you to pay attention. Now, based on this blood type diet theory, they believe that people with type O blood do best with intense physical activities. I mean exercise and animal proteins. Why dairy products and grains may cause problems for them. According to the same people, I am say to the same man, a neuroprotic physician, Dr. Peter, he said gluten, lentils, kidney beans, corn, and cabbage can lead to weight gain in people with blood type. That is my blood type. So health condition associated with type O includes asthma, hay fever, and other allergies and arthritis. Now, here is the reason why I said I don't support this theory. You know why? I eat all the food they advise not to eat. I type O blood and nothing bad, nothing whatsoever caused health issue, health problem, underlyingness, whatever, whatever, has ever happened to me since I've been eating them. In fact, I develop indigestion if I don't eat them like beans, wheat, vegetables, and stuff. Of course, they said I should eat vegetable, but they said blood type, my blood type, or blood, should not eat wheat, corn, and beans. And the ones that are not listed as type O blood diet are the one that cause me food allergy. Therefore, this theory is not right. 
Because if I'm blood, blood, or I mean type O blood, and there are something that gives me allergy, that gives me head concern, head problem, and it's not listed. How do you want me to believe that this theory is actually right? Like corn, they said I should not eat corn, I should not eat wheat. Wheat bread is what I eat. Everybody knows that when I'm coming to Nigeria, I come with my bread. It's tasteless, but it's healthy. I eat corn. Ah, but it's your corn with you. Dara, my boy, oh Lord. Anywhere I go, if I see corn, I must buy. I eat corn when I make when I make beans here. The day I make beans with corn for my kids, I thought they won't be able to eat it with me. They finish it within five minutes. I eat corn. I don't have any allergy, no reaction. And they said, as a type of blood, you should not eat corn and wheat. And this is when I wanted to change everything about my skin. Remember, I talked about my skin, how my face became, you know you know, clear and nice and spotless. I mentioned things that I experiment on. I change all these unhealthy habits, eating habits to uh, healthy habits. This is what I change my diet to. Wheat bread, beans, vegetables, and all those things they said I should not eat. And those are the things that gets me all the optimal health that I need. So somebody is now going to tell me that as this body, because I'm a type O blood, I should not eat those things. Tell me, is this theory right? So when somebody called me and said, oh, Miss Betty, I'm O positive. And they said, I should not eat this. I should not eat that. I'm like, seriously? Well, I'm not a physician, but this is my field. You can eat whatever you think is good for your body. You have to listen to what your body says. So that particular food you eat. If that food gives you reaction, allergy, any signs, any negative signs, stop it. You can as well substitute, even if that food is healthy food, you can as well substitute it with another food that will give you the same nutrient your body needs. Yes. And let me tell you this. All the food you eat, including the I mean, the good, I mean, the healthy and unhealthy food gives reaction. Everything you put in your mouth and you apply on your skin, they react. Same way, any exercise you, ex you, you practice give you reaction, give you signs. If you notice, anytime you do a certain exercise you have not done before, you either feeling pain or you feeling weak or you feeling something that is so unusual going on in your body. That is reaction. That is the response of what you do with your body. And when you eat certain food, whether healthy or, not, or un unhealthy, you must receive response. That food must tell you that, okay, this is good. You know how you get good response from the food? When the food you eat make you look good, when your skin starts looking fresh, you start looking, you know, spotless. Your body glow, soft, smooth. That is the response you get from the healthy food you eat. And what do you get from unhealthy food? You get rashes, you get headache, you get blurring eyes, you get so many things when you eat unhealthy food. That is what you get. And another thing is because you eat healthy food, it doesn't mean that you cannot get negative reaction. You know why you want to get a reactive, uh, negative reaction? You are getting rea a negative reaction because where you live, your environment, your immune system, the blood that runs in you, your age, your sex, all this counts when it comes to diet, when it comes to certain food. Yes, because there's some food uh, the adults cannot eat. And there are some food women cannot eat, especially pregnant women. 
Yes. When you are ovulating, there's some food you cannot eat. And it's not because those foods are not good. No. When you are menstruating, there are some food you cannot eat. It's not because those food are not good. When you are elderly people, there's some food you can no longer eat. When you want to look good, you want your skin to look bright, you know, spotless, fresh, there's some food you must eat. It's not because these food are not good. Yes. They are related to certain reasons why you must not eat them. Just believe that. Don't let anybody convince you wrongly. Don't let anybody advise you wrongly. You see a lot of things going on on social media. People are putting wrong information, content, creating content. They go on social media, they copy and paste all because they want to create content to get paid. Look at people that you are reading information from. Look at the website you are getting your information from. Don't be misled. Yes, it's very important. Don't let people use you to make money. Don't let anyone use you because you are reading those information, you are sharing it, they are getting paid. Don't let them use you to, 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 to get rich. And why you are facing health problem, why you are sick, why you are dealing with one health problem and the other caused by them, by the wrong information they put on social media, on those internet. Because what you see, you think is the right thing. You started doing what they asked you to do. You started putting one thing together to eat or to apply on your skin. And when the problem comes, they have been paid and you are suffering from that problem. That is what you don't know. When they put this thing together, I'm not telling you that these are right. I'm just telling you what they say. I mean, new, I mean, uh, naturopathic physician says about this because they believe that once something happens to a certain human being that carries a certain blood, for instance, A, they believe that that thing happens to all other type A blood patient that is the way they reason they don't put any other thing into consideration now listen again to what they said about type a b and a and b blood this same you know naturopathic physician said that people with type a blood are predisposed to heart disease cancer, diabetes, and do better on an organic vegetarian diet with calming country exercise such as yoga and Tai Chi. And they want you to follow a dairy free, primarily vegetarian diet with a high intake of fruits, vegetables, grains, beans, legumes, nuts, and seeds. Now, people with type B blood are believed to have a robust immune system and a tolerant digestive system and are more adaptable than other blood types. However, people with that type, I mean type B, are more susceptible to autoimmune disorders such as chronic fatigue, uh, lupus, uh, multiple sclerosis, and so on. Therefore, moderate physical exercise and balanced exercises, along with a well-rounded diet is recommended for you. So if you fall into this group, your diet should be a highly varied diet, which include fruits and vegetables, grains, beans, legumes, meats, uh, what is poultry, fish, eggs, and dairy, but avoid nuts and seeds. So, type B blood should avoid nuts and seeds. So, if you are eating nuts and seed, and you know your blood type to be B, don't eat it too. Stop eating it too. But if you are eating it, 
and there is no health issues, no health concern, please continue. You know why you want to continue? You get your fatty acid from those things they said you should not eat. Your, your healthy fat comes from nuts, olive oil, fish. That's where you get your healthy fat from. And if somebody is going to tell you not to eat it, ask the person that where do you get your fat? Of course, they say you should eat fish. You get your fish from it. But you get more fat from one food compared to another food. Take note of that. All right? And if you are type A and B blood, combination of A and B blood, you can consume any food recommended for blood type A and B. You know, it's a combination of A and B. So whatever A is eating, join them with what B is eating together. Naka. That is what they are advising you. But... They advise you to aim for a mainly vegan diet and limit meat. Don't eat meat. Because vegetarians don't eat meat. They only eat food without meat. They don't eat meat. They don't eat fish. Anything that has blood coming out. When you cut a man, the blood is coming out. So it's, it's whatever meat you have. And let me tell you, meat comes in three different types. Fish is meat. Poultry is meat, which is chicken, fowl, they are meat. And beef, which is coming from goat, from cow, they are called beef. So anything meat, things that you kill and the blood comes out, it's meat, don't eat them. That is what they tell you. Now ask them that, how do you get your protein is it from egg from beans alone which is not enough if you are that's why those vegetarians are advised to substitute they are meal regularly with supplements that contain more protein yes because they don't get meat they don't get to eat meat so they must get more protein from something else if you don't do that you will definitely have low hemoglobin because your protein is low now let me shock you with this when it comes to what you cannot eat listen to what they say i mean natural poetic physician i love the word natural poetic natural they are natural they claim to be natural they are not, you know, you know, you know the meaning of natural part. Natural, they are natural. And yes, they tell you not to eat healthy food. All those healthy food. And they can't deceive well. A lot of things are going on in the world. They said no foods are completely forbidden on all blood type diets. However, not all food are considered beneficial for different blood types. And processed foods are discourage for everyone let me analyze let me break this thing down for you the same people that say you should not eat this you should not eat this you must use this you must eat that says that no food are completely forbidden on all blood type diets so if they now say that there are some food that are not forbidden because no food are completely forbidden means Simply means all food are not complete, are not forbidden for you. So why are they now telling you that you must not eat this, you must not eat that? Yes. Even though there are some food that are not beneficial for you, of course, if you eat not, for instance, myself, if I eat not, I develop rashes. I, I, I have allergy. So to that, if I eat not, I mean what? Not is the best source of my fatty acid. So what I do is I substitute it with um I'm on not because these food are good for me, but for my blood, for my skin, for my meal, for one reasons or the other. 
I cannot aid them. That is what they mean by not con I mean, considered beneficial for you. Of course, processed food are discouraged, totally discouraged for anybody, whether you are type A, type B, or sick, or well, or healthy, or unhealthy. Don't eat processed food. You know why? There's nothing like nutrients on processed food. All the nutrients that your body needs to fight those radicals, those bacteria in your body, has been extracted away from that food. They don't have protein, they don't have vitamins, they don't have any nutrients in that food because they have been processed, such as canned food. You cannot eat them because they are not giving your body what your body needs to fight all those bacteria in your body system. They are not giving you what will make your body to, 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 to look well, to feel well. There's no benefit in it. So looking at all these I've been saying, because what they said I should not eat, I eat them regularly without getting hurt. Actually proves nothing relating to blood type. Yes. Now let me tell you pros and cons of this blood type. I'm starting from pros now. The advantages. These people said that the blood type diet has positives and negative. Of course, it must have positive and negative. I'm, I'm experiencing it. If they also said that it encourages exercise. Yes, the blood type diet encourages exercise. They mentioned it there. And lastly, they mentioned that each blood type plan emphasizes choosing whole food over processed food, which is a healthy choice. Yes. Because all the food they mentioned we should eat, they are all good food. They are all food. They are not processed food. So this is good. And so I, 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 I could live with that. Now let's talk about disadvantage, the cons. Despite some potential benefits, the blood type diet is not recommended by health experts and has several drawbacks. Yes. No research to support that the blood type diet is an effective weight loss strategy because I am, they said, if I want to lose weight, I should eat fish. I mean, no, if I want to gain weight, I should eat fish, eat this, eat that. And I've been eating fish forever. I eat fish a lot. I don't eat much meat. I don't gain weight. So there is no support that shows that the blood type is an effective weight loss straight i mean strategy because if i'm eating it i'm not gaining weight so if i stop i will be losing weight right so i'm eating it i should be gaining weight and the next one says not based on science it is not based on science. eating for your specific blood type is not rooted in science science is not supporting it they are not proving it there's no proof for that and lastly, not backed by evidence, which means further studies are still needed to support any of the health claims associated with the blood type diet. Yes. Hold it in your hands. I'm telling you all this because I also want you to compare and contrast Check yourself if you know your blood type. Match it with what I've just said to know if the theory is right. Don't let me be the one researching and also proving it to be wrong. You two go ahead. If you know your blood type, look at what you eat. Compare and contrast if the theory is actually right. I have proven my own to be wrong. You can do the same thing. As far as my blood type is concerned, the theory is not right. Yours may be right until you check it, until you prove it to me. That is when you know it is right. Viewers, the blood type diet can only be a healthy choice for you if it is rooted in scientific fact. As for me, the blood type diet is based on theory. It is not rooted in scientific fact. And it is effectiveness as 
not been proven in clinical setting. Yes, it has not been proven in the clinical setting. Anything that has not been proven in a clinical setting is just a word of mouth. You shouldn't act on it. You shouldn't believe it as your medication. No. Don't do that, especially when it comes to food. You have to be very careful. What you need to do is to pay attention to your body reaction to certain food you either eat or drink. Things you apply on your skin and what you do with your body, such as exercise, the work you do every day. That is what I mean by what you do with your body. Yes, because there are certain things you do. Daily activities can serve as your exercise. Depends on what you do every day. If you park your car here and walk about three to four, five blocks, you are actually exercising your body. That is good for your body. But when you are in a work environment, you walk and walk and walk, no rest. You are on your computer walking, no getting up. You get home, you don't eat. You get to the kitchen, you cook and cook and cook and cook and cook and cook. You don't taste the food. You feel tired. You take your shower and get on the bed. That is stress. That is not exercise. That is not physical activity. That is stress. You go to work from, mon from morning to evening. You are taking one fight to one place to another. Or you are seeing patients, no sitting down, no break, you, everything. And when you're supposed to take a break, you take, you're supposed to go on holiday. You don't do it. You want to make money for that, your holiday. You don't want to work to make money. When you get home, you just drop your bag, you shower. Some people don't even shower. You get out, go to another job to make money. That is stress. That is not physical activity. Physical activity is when you clean the house. You didn't start it to one hour, going back and forth, clean the seat, shower, relax, eat, go to bed and sleep. Physical activity. When you go to party, dance, have fun with people, socialize with other people, that is physical activity. When you are in your house, turn your TV on or your radio or your whatever you want to, that want to give you the, the music, you dance just, just like the one I always do. You dance for two, three, four, five minutes or 10 minutes max. That is physical activity. When you are on the computer, bah, 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 within 30 minutes, you are up, then you come back. That is physical activity. Yes. But if you stress yourself, no rest, no break. That is stress. And that is not healthy. All right. Now, let's quickly treat the question we received from the skincare um, edition. Yes. Let's talk about it. Um, the first question says, why do we need to pay attention to our face rather than our body? That's what the question says. Here is the answer. Your face must be given special priority treatment. You know why? Aside receiving vitamin D from sunlight, your face must not be exposed too much to sunlight. You know why? Because sun is quite aggressive environmental factor for human skin. 70% of skin aging time takes place because of the sun UV radiation. When you see somebody looking older than his or her age, go and look at that person very well. If it is not sun exposure to sunlight related, it will be eating habits or, I mean, uh, not being hygienic. Those are the three things. If you expose yourself too much to skin, because they are starting, I'm going to get to that question. 
there are certain times you must stay in the sun. There are certain parts of your body you must expose to sunlight. If you are getting too much of this, it makes your body wrinkles, shrink. You look older than your age. That is the meaning of 70% of skin aging takes place because of the sun UV radiation. If you look at some burned skin using a microscope, you will be able to see the skin cells and blood vessels that have been damaged. So suddenly getting a lot of sun is more dangerous than steady exposure over time. Don't forget. So the short UVB wavelength that cause suborn can also damage DNA and suppress the skin immune system. So the longer, more penetrating UV wavelengths may create highly reactive oxygen molecules capable of damaging the skin cell membranes and the DNA inside. That's it. Another reason why your face needs special treatment is that your face is exposed to dirt, pollution, toxin, and bacteria. See, it's covered with clothes. Expect those that dress nakedly, thinking they are in, they are in, 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 they are doing fashion or they are into fashion. I'm not talking about them. But if you want to dress responsibly, only your face. They're mostly exposed to sunlight, to dirt, to, to toxins, to bacteria, to everything going on out there. Sometimes we put gloves in our heads, but we can't cover our face, but we must see. We wear socks. We wear stocking pants. We wear clothes, top, skirts, dress, wrapper. We cover the body most of the time. But this face, we don't cover them all the time. Except and we let her. It can't. No more bobo boy more hour. And even the thing they put to cover their face has holes. Oh my neck is the transparent material. So they still see this dust can still go through, can still penetrate through those nets on their face. So face is the only part of our body they are mostly exposed to dirt, to bacteria, to pollution, to toxins out there. And you must protect your face from them. Next question says, which one? I saw it here. It says, which one go first on the face? After watching the face. Is it toner, moisturizer, or sunscreen? So this person actually wants to know which one we use first. Is it a toner before or after a moisturizer? Or you apply sunscreen before moisturizer? So this is the question. For all skin type, for all skin types, whether you are uh, dry skin, oily skin, you know, combination, you know, dry to oily, any, any type of skin you carry. Using a toner before moisturizer helps to lock in the moisture and keep skin hydrated throughout the day. But if you have dry or sensitive skin, use toner at night before bed because they are less likely to be irritating when applied after cleansing with a gentle soap or oil free makeup remover yes and as for whether to apply sunscreen before moisturizer this is what i will have to say sunscreen is one of the most important things you can do for your skin you know why because not only does it protect you from the sun but it also helps Keep your skin looking healthy and elastic. However, many people 
forget to apply sunscreen before moisturizers. Let me tell you what, what can happen. This can lead to a more delicate skin type being irritated, which can lead to wrinkles, age spots, and other signs of grim aging. So should you apply sunscreen before or after moisturizer? Well, some people apply it before moisturizer. Why others do after? The general consensus is that it is best to apply sunscreen first as it has a shorter active life than moisturizer and can easily be washed off during the day. If you apply sunscreen first, you may need to reapply more, more and more throughout the day because your skin will be exposed to the sun for a longer period of time. But if you apply moisturizer first, your skin will absorb the sunscreen more quickly and you will be better protected against sun damage. So, moisturizer go first then sunscreen the next question says how long can i stay in the sun without sunscreen that's what i said i'm going to get there in a minute some dermatologists believe that as long as you don't have complication with usual sun exposure you can sunbreak without sunscreen for up to 20 minutes each day but to reduce the risk of sunburn it may be best to stick to five to 10 minutes every day. Because regular sun exposure is the most natural way to get enough vitamin D to maintain healthy blood vessel. It's advised to get 10 to 30 minutes of midday sunlight several times per week. The next question says, which vitamin is for skin? I talked about this last week. I'm just going to mention it briefly because I talked about vitamin D, which you receive from sunlight if you can get it. Or you can also get it from food you eat like orange, boiled egg, almond, you know, milk or not, um, mush mushrooms, uh, salmon fish, cod liver oil. Uh, tuna and more you can get that. Vitamin C is also also good for your skin, and you can get it from, of course, orange. I mentioned orange. Lemon can give you vitamin C. Sunflower seed, almond, peanuts, avocado, sweet uh, sweet pepper, mangoes, um, kiwi fruits, all these. We give you vitamin E and kale, collard green, uh, spinach, uh, broccoli, lettuce, soybeans, prickles, blueberry, uh, pumpkin, um, and what is all this can also give you vitamin K. Yes, vitamin D, vitamin C, vitamin E, and vitamin K are good for skin. So experiment on any food that gives you all these vitamins. Yes. Make sure you get them. Get enough of vitamins to keep your skin looking healthy and youthful. This is where I'm going to stop. I hope I've answered some of your questions. And if I've not talked about your own, if I've not answered your question, please and please, wait till next show not next week we are having guests next week but in two weeks time i mean we will definitely answer all your questions please bear with me don't feel ignored don't feel abandoned don't feel neglected i put you first in everything i do on this show there are now lots to deliver this service as promised the almighty god just I just need your support i need your prayer Please keep praying for me, whether you love me or you don't love me. Pray for me and pray for this 
knowledge, the strength to be able to come here and give you the best information you all need. Trust me, I promise that. This is where we are going to stop today until we come back next week. Please send your questions to us via our Facebook and Instagram at Healthy Living with Beaufort TV or leave us your questions below this video. We will be more than happy to answer all concerns questions that relate to health and nutrition. Trust me, I will do that. And don't forget to share this video with your network. Thank you so much for joining us today. See you next week. I'm Bofa, an integrative nutrition expression. Sleep well to a productive week tomorrow. Good night. Love you. Bye.